viewers, welcome to this week's episode of Business Compass. And we're very excited to be here this week. Business Compass is proudly produced by Fiducial Services Limited. This week's episode, we're going to go to the transportation business. We've been there before. We're going back there again to see what's going on there and whether we can improve the courier services in this country. Everyone has a courier story. And we could do a whole sh season on courier delivery in Ghana. But hey, today we're going to be talking to Multiply Hub, Prince Agbeaji, and to see what's been going on in his business. And I'm really blessed and happy to have Mona Kwate and Kwame Educhum, I just discovered, Jan mm -hmm. <laughs> on the show today. <laughs> Mona is the managing partner of BVM Advisory Services and a former deputy minister of finance. Mona, thank you for making time again to be You're here. You're welcome, Charlotte. Such a pleasure. And Kwame is the managing director of African Energy Consortium Limited and a lawyer and an entrepreneur wearing many hats. Kwame, thank you for making it here today. I'm glad to be here. You are. I can tell. Thank you. You guys are darlings for doing this. So we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll meet Prince and talk about Multiply Hub, his business, which he started from his bedroom I believe. <laughs> ah, this will be good. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Prince IBIG and I'm the CEO of Multiply Hub Courier Service. Multiply Hub Courier Service has been into an existence for the past three years now. Multiply Hub is into courier service and all we do is to deliver our business clients' products to their customers. I was jobless, I wasn't doing anything in mind sister borrowed me money in order to buy a motorbike because I love riding. I started using the bike as an Okada rider. One of my customers who I normally spend time with who advised me, explained to me that with what I'm doing, why can't I also focus on delivery? So that was where I got the idea of going into delivery. And as I went into it, I realized that it was something beneficial, especially solving business people problem. I started alone and today I'm having five employees who are also putting in their best to push the business to the level that it has to go to. The challenges I do face here is uh, I have a space problem. I need a bigger space in order to be able to store a lot of customers' products so that when the orders come, we can easily package it and deliver. Another challenge we am also facing is security. Over the years, I have lost a lot of bags because my security is not that strong in order to protect me from theft. One of my challenges is also about finance. I also need to invest more into the business in order to move the business to the next level because in order to serve my customers I need to invest into motorbikes, marketing. What I'm expecting from Business Compass is to gain visibility and reach wider audience who will see what I do and patronize my service. What I'm expecting from the expert is to tap into their knowledge so that I will know how to run and manage multiply half in order to get to the level in which the business has to get to. Welcome back viewers. This is Business Compass, the GPS for your business. And today we're talking courier services in Ghana. And we have Prince Agbeaji in the studio, and he's brought his business to the table, Multiply Hub. Welcome, Prince. Thank you. So tell us about Multiply Hub. How did you start and why? Actually, um, Multiply Hub is all about delivering people's products. Okay. And I started as an Okada rider. Oh, now, yes, please. you were riding? Yes. And in 2017, when I came back from London, I spent about seven months in the house not doing anything. 
and by then also I w and what I love doing most is riding moto and I realized Okada business <laughs> has been generating income for other people and I said okay that is like since I don't have money I spoke to my sister about it and she lent me money to buy a motorbike so that was how I got into the Okada business and I realized it's a good business but the only issue I was having was the police and the Okada business which is also not being legalized so I've been having a whole lot of issue with police and as an entrepreneur I said okay then what, what can I do that will not be having issues with them hold up this is a very fascinating story so first of all your passion was riding bikes. Yes, please. And you decided to find a way to make money from yeah. something you enjoy. Yes, please. And then you got a loan from your sister, family financing. Yeah, that was in 2017. And you bought a motorbike and you started riding Okada. Yes, please. And it was illegal. Yes. And so you tried to figure out how can you convert what you enjoy doing and you're doing into a legal form of earning a living. Yes, please. Fascinating. And so you came into the courier Yes, please. So when it was Okada, you were carrying passengers. I was carrying passengers. But with courier, you are now delivering products. Yes, please. Fantastic. So how long did it take to pay back your sister? Oh, it took it took one month, two days. Yeah. Hmm. She she lent me. I hope the sisters out there are listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She lent me almost uh, four thousand Ghana cities. Okay. Yeah, and that was what I used to purchase the motorbike. And I started the Okada you could pay back within a month? Yeah, because I was serious. Oh. Wow, that's fascinating. So you started the, the career business, Multiply Hub, in 2018? It's in, yeah. Okay. So how has that been? It has been very, very, very good. Looking at the profit it was generating when I started. At first, I was doing the courier and the Okada until I met one customer who normally gives me a lot of orders I have okay. to deliver. So through her orders, I was able to meet other people, which was able to help me to expand my business. Then I decided to get an, uh, decided to get a, a secretary who would be handling the call because the calls were too many for me. So when I got the secretary, I when moved. You cost, what do you mean cost? What cost? The call, calls. Call, so the calls. calls. Okay. Yeah, they were too much. So I have to get someone who will be handling the calls for me so that I can focus on the delivery because that is what generates oh. the money. And it, it also got too busy. I have to add other people to support me. Wow. So, so, so how many staff do you have now? Currently, I have five. Five? Yeah, riders. at first. Yeah, at employee. first. I employ about 11 people, but because I had no experience in managing, managing. so I lost. <coughs> so I have to go back again okay. and start gradually because I have learned my lessons from employing people without knowing how to manage them. Okay, yeah. so now you have five riders. Y now I have uh, four riders, one secretary. Four riders, yeah. one secretary. Yeah. Is your secretary also the dispatch <coughs> person? No, please. No. You have a separate dispatch person? Yes, please. Who, who takes the calls and shares that, the The work. lady is the one who takes the secretary. So the secretary, yeah. she manages so she the calls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and you have how many motorbikes now? Currently, I have six. Six. Do you ride yourself? I'm a very good rider. No, no do you, you still do, ride? Do some of the yes, business? I do. Okay. I do coordinate <coughs> and also ride when it so gets you do busy. deliveries too? Yes, please. But this is an absolutely fascinating story. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And okay. you start this, and in three years, you've moved from one motorbike, yeah. paid off the loan, and you now have how many motorbikes? Currently, I have six. six. It was even six more than six. Yeah. No, but you have six motorbikes and f five emplo employees. employees. That's brilliant. In three Indeed. years. Indeed. Wow. I'm mighty impressed. Mm -hmm. So... <coughs> and you are registered as a sole proprietor, sure. which is fine, except for the liability issues. Yes. So, quick thing I'll just say is, um, and you've learned, managing people, yeah. they are carrying people's goods and services, sure. um, motorbikes have a high accident rate. Sure. The one thing that should be your best friend is insurance. Sure. You need to take out insurance over the staff who are riding, okay. over the asset, the motorbikes, and over the goods that they are carrying back and forth. Oh, okay. So, if there's any damage to anybody's goods as they are riding insurance would pay that's mm -hmm. and because it's sole proprietorship it means any liability 
is hitting you directly. Mm -hmm. sure. So the best thing you can do for yourself as a matter of urgency is to get insurance. Oh, okay. Cover the staff okay. against accidents and all that. Cover the goods that they are carrying in the course of the business. Okay. And cover, what was the third one? <laughs> the goods, the staff, and then, of course, the motorbikes. The motorbikes. Yeah, you need to do that sure. urgently. But um, so you seem to be doing well. Why do you need us? Because of the challenges. What are the challenges? Initially, when I started in 2019, I lost about four motorbikes. How? It was stolen. Wow. Okay. It was stolen. And you had insurance? Mm. <laughs> yes, I had insurance. Insurance was able to pay only one bike. Third party or comprehensive? Uh, comprehensive. So why did they pay only one? Yes, or you had only insurance one. over only one bike? No, I had insurance on three bikes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but insurance was able to pay one why? because the accidents were continuous. Yeah, I said the accident, the, the, the motor were, uh, were stolen continuously. But like it, let's it say just raises your premium. Yeah, it, we need to look at that. It depends yeah. on the yeah. and, and, and aside that, we also have a lot of accident issues we have even submitted and they have not even paid yet. So it, it may be so interesting to also look at the kind of coverage you're yes. taking, mm -hmm. the premiums you're paying, yeah. and whether they're up to date mm -hmm. before we can say whether the insurance company is um, avoiding liability mm -hmm. or not. So we need to look at that. Yeah. Okay. And you should make sure that you do some investigation on the insurance company, company you're using. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get a track history of them. Do they pay? Don't they pay? Do they stick to their word? Don't they stick to their word? Before you insure. Uh, okay. But before how were they getting lost? Is it that staff okay. ran away with it or no. they were stolen? Two, two were stolen at from where? From whom? Yeah, when the rider came and he parked and entered inside the office. By the time we were done with what we were supposed to do, when we came out, the bike was not there. And the second one, too, the same. By the third and fourth, I went to a customer's place and I was negotiating with him on what we have to do the next day. So after we were done, I came back. The motor was not there. And the fourth one, it was taken from one of my employees' house. Mm. But you, you, indicate, you, you yeah. indicate that you've lived, is it in London before? Yes, please. And you see how they chain their bikes? But actually, um, I have no idea looking at what I was doing there. Mm. Oh, they chain the bikes through the spokes when they so get it can't be moved. So it can't be moved? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it be a simple thing to yeah, buy those simple, ones. Yes, yeah. and just chain it yeah. when you get I, down. Yeah, I, I did that after losing those bikes. <coughs> and no bike has been stolen since. Yes, yeah, since. Okay, so no you've solved that, problem. solved that problem. Okay, but so back to your challenges, so okay. that in the next segment we can look at okay. your challenges. You said, so what are your key challenges now? My key, you financing the you? business. Financing the business, okay? Yes, please. What and also, And also how to put the right structures in place in order to expand. Okay, structure. Okay, towards expansion. Okay, and my customer service base is also not that well. I thought your customer service was good because it was the things that have led you to where you are was the family loan, mm. and then good customer service to one customer now took you to the next level where you you scaled up. Oh, okay, but you still think that there's room for improvement because of the reports. Okay, all right. So we'll look at that. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll look at Prince's key challenges, how to finance his business, how to put in the right structure towards expanding it, and how to improve on his customer service performance. Okay, so we'll take a break, and we'll be right back.
whatever the occasion. With ATL, you can never be out of style. ATL, bringing fabric to life. Welcome back, viewers. This is Business Compass, and we're talking with Prince about his business, Multiply Hub, which is a career delivery business. Um, Mona, you've been listening to us. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What do you think? Prince needs financing to improve and expand his business. Th thank you, Charlotte. Prince, I think you have a great business, and I'm glad that you're thinking of a model that will take it to the next level. You sure. want to grow the business. Sure. I'm assuming that when you talk about access to finance, it's about finance to grow the business, sure. unless... Yes, sure. because you already have your things. Sure. Now, before we move there, for the equipment that you said you have, the motorcycles, the tracking devices, is that paid for completely sure. or are there any loans attached to them? No, it is being paid completely. They are all yours. So that's yes, pure equity. So as of today, you don't owe the company, Multiply Hub, does yes. not owe anyone. No, please. Okay. Brilliant. So that's, that's good. So in order to um, get extra financing, one, you already have assets. You have equipment as assets. Sure. Okay. And that in itself come from a sort of collateral, albeit it's depreciated since you bought them. Sure. So they are not the same new ones, but they can be a form of collateral. Then the business itself, its ability to generate revenue is one of the big ways of getting finance. Mm. We call it revenue-based uh, loans. Okay. So that's what the bank Do you know what that at. means? So someone is, is going to lend you money based on okay. how much is coming Economy. into the business. Yeah. So yeah. the money they are lending to you is based on the revenues, the okay. inflows the that are coming in. Okay. Yeah. Because that is what they will be looking at more than motorcycles mm. and trucks. You know, selling that won't give them much back. Okay. Because that's what they'll be looking at. They'll be viewing your sustainability. Okay. How m many more years can you be in this business? Okay. okay. Now, the fact that you even went to them to grow the business is one. You are thinking the future. So that's good for them. Psychologically, you want to grow the business. So let me ask you, what is that growth? Is it 10 more motorcycles? What would that financing entail? Are you clear entail? what you want the money for? Sure, please. Tell me what it is. It will help me to get more motorbikes. What's How more? many more? How many? five actually my target is 10 10 total motorbikes 10 total or 10 new 10 total 10 total, 10 total. okay so five new cycles is what we are looking at yes please today we know what those motorcycles cost on average they're anywhere from 3000 to 12000 cities per one Yes, please. So the type you want, what Man is the price on that? Um, uh, yes, it is <laughs> currently it is four thousand two hundred. Your is that the royal? Yeah, the royal four thousand one fifty dash twelve. Okay, so let's say that plus um, the insurance and all that to get it on the road is five thousand CDs. 5, so we are looking at borrowing twenty five thousand CDs okay. to get that. What else are you looking to borrow? Okay, and uh, and also putting the structure, because when you want to put a structure in place, it also involves money. That is okay. cool to get a, a, a career license, to also put one or two things okay. in place. It needs so let's say you wanted working capital, sure. let's say another 5,000 for working capital. You also mentioned that you wanted an accounting system. Yes. It could be a simple one, but it will still cost you a bit of money. Mm -hmm. So let's say in total, we are looking to borrow 40,000 Ghana CDs. So now the question is, how do we convince uh, a financial institution or a person or, or, or even an, in, an, a, investor, an yeah. investor to okay. give us 40,000 CDs? How do we do that? So those are the questions you lay out. You pretend you are the banker. Answer those and then use that to make a presentation to the financial institution. I was actually going to ask Today, him that. Would you lend yourself 40,000 CDs? Myself. Yeah. More than. More Good. Than. Yeah. Good. How would you pay back? Looking at the experience I have when I started this business, I've been able to build my capacity to generate enough money myself, mm. excluding my business. So what does that mean? Aside, aside running Multiply Hub, I have other one or two things I've been doing. No, but we're lending the money to Multiply Hub. Yes, please. So Multiply Hub must be able to pay us yeah. back. Yes, please. 
at the moment, uh, multiplier has been able to go into a certain level. No, uh, whatever money I'm able to lend, it will be able to pay Do back. Do you have it. contracts with some of your key customers? Where for every courier pickup, they call you? Yes, please. Is there a contract, written contract? Mm, we don't have written contract because they are also not well structured. But mm. they give me orders to deliver almost every day. And even most of the time, I don't even meet their... How do you take payments from them? Actually, um, when, when, when we deliver, we even take the yeah. price. How do you receive it? How do I receive it? How is it paid to you? Actually, cash, Momo. cash, cash. Okay. Cash, Does Momo. That, is that cash banked? Does the cash go into a bank account so that mm. if I looked at your bank statements today, I'll see that every day there's money Actually, coming from my, this client. My Momo account. Your Momo account. Yes. It goes into the Momo, Momo account. account. Yes, so if we looked at it, we can see yeah, that can see in the clearly. last three months, mm. every day, this client sure, was paying sure. you because that's a sustainability. Yes. That's the revenue Mona is talking about that sure. anyone can see sure. from there's the numbers evidence. that this sure. is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Charlotte has taken you through being able to prove the past yes, as we speak today. The banker is asking you, what have you done in the past? Okay. You are saying... I've been able to collect so much money. Yes, please. The other question they will ask you is, now that you want to buy five more, mm -hmm. what will that five more bring to your business? Because it is not linear that because the first five did, let's say, 30,000 a month, the next five will do the same 30,000 a month. It's not linear. Yes, please. What would, how would you answer that? How much more will that bring into the business? When I, when, when I buy the five bags, now I also need to look at uh, advertising my service in order to bring in more customers whom I will be able to serve so that the other five motors will be able to generate enough mm -hmm. revenue to meet my expense and also make Very profit. good. So you are thinking in the right way. Your business plan, which you will take to the financial institution, will show that as you increase your assets, you also have to increase administrative efforts sure. for marketing, okay. for um, supervising, because now you have more people. Yes, it's, it's a lot more drivers, right? Yes, so you will show all those expenses, and then we will the bank will know the revenues that will come in, how much they will be paid, which we call interest, okay. and what will go to your expenses. Okay. It is possible. That with buying five motorcycles, you may not necessarily be able to pay your interest. Okay. So get ready for that. Okay. In that case, you will run various financial models. Okay. So it will be good to sit with your account accountant okay. to take you through that. That at what point does what we call economies of scale change? Mm -hmm. And you start having diminishing returns. Okay. And at what point am I comfortable supervising and using to grow the business so that number five work with your accountant to decide whether it is indeed five motorcycles that you can comfortably move to okay. at this point in time okay. so that you know exactly how much you want to borrow okay. Prince, is this Mona, making Mona. sense is this helping yeah, yeah, okay. yes yeah. the other question is that does he have an accountant we'll, we'll get to that but for, for purposes of financing now, we are preparing ourselves, a, a bankable it's document. Part of the structure we're going Some to of be the questions with. that you are going to be asked. Okay. 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 So your revenue, your ability to manage a certain quantum of equipment. Okay. You see that yourself, you started thinking, I have to get more customers. I have mm -hmm. to do more tracking devices, so forth and so on. My dispatch person must be able to handle more calls mm -hmm. for the 10. So that will grow with it. Okay. okay. So for purposes of financing. That is where the financial institution will see clearly your ability to repay them. Mm -hmm. They will also look at your track record. You've never borrowed before. I've, I've borrowed before. You have borrowed before. Yeah. And what happened during that time? Were you able to repay easily? Not your sister's own. Okay. Yeah, but I was able to. And, and is there evidence to that? Yes, please. You add it to it. You show that I have a credit history. Yes. I am yes. able to repay loans. Okay. Mm? So now... If you're, no, let's mm -hmm. just reiterate. If you're watching yes. from home, so you need to understand key things. If you are seeking financing to expand your business, showing your past, your history, your revenues that you've been collecting and how consistent that line of revenue is, your ability to repay, your credit worthiness, you've borrowed before, 
from family, from a financial institution, and you have repaid. All those things count, and they help towards attracting financing to expand the business. Okay, we have to go on a break. And when we come back, we would now start looking at the issues around structure and um, customer service. But I, I'm really happy about Prince's level of self-awareness, exactly. to know that if I'm going to move to the next level, I need to address my structure. And if you are watching at home, this could have been you mm -hmm. sitting where Prince is sitting and getting support for your business, but you didn't send us a one-minute video we asked for. So send us a one-minute video on WhatsApp to 026-300-5055 so we, we can either bring you into the studio or we can respond to your business challenges. So stay with us. We'll be back right after the break. With ATL, you can never be out of style. ATL, bringing fabric to life. Welcome back, viewers. We're talking to Prince of Multiply Hub, and we're discussing how to finance his business, expand it, and also issues around the structure he needs to support the growth of his business and customer service, how to make his customers happy. Yeah. I'm assuming your customers are happy already. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> Not all. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at that. We'll help you. Kwame, you've been making notes. The, 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 you know, when I read your write-up, I was asking myself, well, what is there to discuss? But you know something? You know what you've shown me? No, please. You've shown me 95% of the work that is done, and that is confidence. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You've shown confidence you. that no matter the challenge, you will break through. Sure. Even when they stole your motorbikes and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing you should also bear in mind is that the bank would look at your inputs in terms of how much money you bring in. You don't have to have a huge quantum of money. But so far as there is a record of you putting Richie, money yeah. in the bank all the time. The stream the stream of your bank, they can see sustainability. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to raise the kind of capital that you're looking for. Okay. The banks need to have trust in you. Okay. When you earn money, do you put some aside? Uh, from 2019, uh, I decided uh, to open a business account that is for multiplier so that whatever income that comes in it will be deposited That's into that good. account okay yeah so that i can have track records okay but are you saving is what he's asking you sure so, sure. so do you have some yes, cash please. that yes. is sitting there yes okay. please mm. so you should also remember that money lying in the bank that doesn't work for you is useless sure. so the money you put in the bank should work for you sure. you should find some of these investments that you can put it in and it's creating interest for you. In fact, treasury management. In, fact, in <laughs> fact, right now, there are some banks in Ghana today who, where treasury bills are concerned, you can always add on. It's not the old bit where you put 5,000 there, you can't add on, you can't take out. Okay. You can add on all the time. So anytime you get money, you can add on. And you can't take the money out till after three, four years. But you're bumping. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you're bumping mm -hmm. your your investment up, and it works for you. And you'll be surprised. The twenty CDs, the thirty CDs, the five hundred CDs, the two hundred CDs. The way it masses up quickly. 
you'll be very surprised. So when you're ready to go to the bank, you can take that money out, put it in your account, and the bank will see that you have a good record. Okay. Kwame, just to add quickly to that, that money that you don't use all the time, but you set aside and invest, can also act as what we call cash collateral. Cash, yes. Yeah. It can back a loan that you want to pick. Because it's already at the bank, they know they have that. Mm -hmm. So it's also it works in a, as a double um, benefit. But I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. okay. um, do we still have equipment lease options? Because yes. rather yes. than going to a bank to borrow yes. money to buy the motorbikes, yes. you could actually go to a company that sells the motorbikes. Leasing and people lease it. also use this almost the same financial criteria okay. because of uh, perhaps the equipment g not being there anymore. So they are also big into insurance, exactly. and then to your lease payments that you can make those lease payments some of them actually ask for a collateral a cash collateral okay. small but that's another bit. option he may consider rather than the traditional yes. vanilla loan interest the other thing you can look at and sometimes it's always good to do your own research go to the bank ask them what kind of monies can you give out their loans and their overdrafts mm -hmm. some attract high interest some don't attract high interest what do I need to know about your overdraft system? What's the payment schedule for overdrafts? What's the payment schedule for loans? And within yourself, because you're smart, because you're confident, you can now sit and plan. The other thing I was going to ask you, you've got to a point now where you need to put in a business plan. Okay. Before you talk about the business plan, I was just wondering, why are we only considering debt as the financing option for him and not equity? Well, it depends on whether the people who would want to put money do you know the difference your career mm, yes but maybe i will need okay so Spanish. what we've been discussing now the financing model has all been okay. debt you yeah. go to a bank yeah or you go to an equipment company and then they give you the you take a loan they give you the money you buy the motorbikes but and you you're are paying that responsible yeah. at this point. yes you're paying that in interest every month or whatever now the other option is equity where somebody looks at so we look at your business and we say oh Prince is doing very well. He needs money to expand. And maybe the value of the business, when we look at everything he's put in, is let's say 100,000, and we are going to bring in 50,000 cities so you can buy more motorbikes, put a structure in place, and um, right. insurance and all that. And in exchange for that, we're taking shares in the business. Mm. Is that something you are open to, first Meaning of all? Meaning you're not a 100% owner, and you're no longer a sole proprietor. Yes, please. Uh, I'll be into that bar with 50,000 and looking at... I was just giving Okay, okay. It, it will depend on, on how much the person would like to invest because I know what comes out of the business. That may also depend on what um, percentage of shares yes. you're also willing to give out. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what, what you, you need to control. sit and determine how much control you're willing to give. With, with, with that, I have... I have uh, minimum knowledge how to put those structures in place. So with that, I will need someone so who, need under on that. Yeah, who oh. understands it. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, so if the person came and said, you know what, I'm going to put 100,000 in, mm. and your business, let's say everything you've put in is 100,000, mm. you will still need to decide that, okay, I'm willing to give up 40% uh -huh. or 60% mm. or 70%. I think that one, I can agree on that if I have an advisor who can guide me. So no, but the thing is, it, the, the advisor would guide you, but for some people, mm -hmm. they don't want to feel like they are working for somebody else. So if the person was taking 70%, mm -hmm. and you have minority shares, but it's a much bigger entity, mm -hmm. you have to decide within yourself whether as the dream bearer, this is your dream, whether you are willing to take a minority stake in a bigger entity, mm -hmm. and then you may not even remain CEO, you are now like in charge of maybe operations but it's a bigger entity those are all the things that okay. come with equity actually I, I want to go in into what i'm doing big so if there is, if someone is coming to invest which will lead to the vision i think okay. I'll no, go so it's good to have that level of yeah. self-knowledge and be clear in your mind so that when you're speaking to an investor okay. even when you're being guided people the, your advisor knows okay. what you're willing to to give up okay. because for some people they would rather remain 100% owner of okay. something valued at 20,000 okay. than to be 10% shareholder of a 2 million exactly. entity so you okay. need to be clear about okay. what you are comfortable okay. with okay. and the fact that opening up like that means a loss of control but could also mean 
more revenue because you are not carrying the risk. Sure. So it's not your headache now to find money every month sure. and pay back the rent. Sure. Sure. You and the your partners, because now they are equity partners, they sure. own the business with you. You sit, sure. and at the end of the year, how much profit have we made? And you have a dividend policy, mm -hmm. and you divide the profit, sure. so you are not carrying the risk yourself. Sure. The important thing is to understand that there are different ways of financing your expansion. Okay. You can get people to buy shares in your entity and restructure, or you can also go the traditional other route of taking a loan and financing the expansion and knowing that the responsibility is on you to repay that the principal and the interest and manage all that yourself. So okay. there are several options. So and, and to add to that, sometimes if some people take equity in your business, they can take it for a certain duration of time. Sure. And then afterwards it refers to yes. you. Okay. Um, the other thing I also wanted to touch on is that you have operational cost. So your courier license, your maintenance, your salaries, mm -hmm. your fuel, yeah. your helmets, and I would also add, you need to uniform your, your riders. Mm -hmm. it, it shows professionalism in the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so... And insurance. And, and insurance, yes. Mm -hmm. So, for especially for the fuel, anybody who buys fuel, you need to get a receipt. Okay. Because over a certain duration, you need to see how much you're spending. Mm -hmm. Because it's a major cost to your business yeah. Yeah. so that is very important and you need to understand how much is being made. sometimes they could be shortchanging you sometimes it's also good to buy from one fuel station mm -hmm. so that they know that you can always cross-check mm. if they they are, they are trying to play a fast one on you yeah, okay. but you're looking at it your personal cost don't seem to be that much sure. so you should be able to control it with everything you do keep your receipts Okay. And at the end of every probably quarter, get your accountant to come in to do the books. So that brings us to the accountant. Mm -hmm. If you do don't you have, have one, one, is it time to get one? But yeah, see, you're doing a lot of things very, very, very that well. That is structuring it. Yes, you're very clear about your yeah. vision. You're very clear about what you want to do. You've learned the lesson that when you scale up too quickly, it's better to reduce and do what you mm -hmm. can manage and grow incrementally. You're doing some things really well. You're collecting your revenues properly mm -hmm. and banking them in a manner that can be tracked. And we can, anyone can monitor the, the growth. You're not doing as badly as you imagine. Mm -hmm. And for a sole proprietorship, even your structures are fine. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with you that if you now need to scale up, depending on which, whether mm -hmm. you're going debt or equity, then the structure may need to change. Otherwise, it may be better to maintain this mm. structure and just improve on it. Mm. In terms of the, um, the stuff um, Kami was talking about, mm -hmm. okay. tracking your expenses better, keeping the same, um, you know, not a bloated staff body. And almost all your staff are earning. They are revenue generators. Generating. Yes, so that's yes. good. You are not keeping big admin structure so no. i I, th I think he's doing pretty well yes. for me there are a few things that um pop out of this sort of business and i'm sure he's already away one is that motorcycles depreciate quite well, fast hold that yeah. hold that mm. you're taking we'll us into back. very serious issues yes. so let's go to coach's corner and we come back and we look at i like the word depreciation that came up and the replacement <laughs> the yeah. replacement yes because that's his main and asset the type of how motorbike. to manage so this is asset management we're going into yeah. now. How to manage your assets better. We go to Coach's Corner, and when we come back, we talk asset management. Hello, it is exciting to be with you again. This is Coach's Corner on Business Compass. I am Coach Bell. Tonight's tip is about passion the inner drive or motivation that keeps you going even when things are not going according to plan. Being an entrepreneur requires a healthy dose of passion. When you feel deeply convinced about something, pursue it, explore it, never fight it. Passion transmits energy to perform. Personal energy can turn into financial energy, which is money. Your passion must be deep and strong enough to move you into action. That's how you succeed in business. Just remember, 
business is simply a vehicle used to transform your passion into financial energy. That's our show for tonight. But before I go, let me leave you with this quote by Anonymous. Success is 10% ability and 90% sweat. Thank you for your time. Welcome back from Coach's Corner. We hope you enjoyed um, what the lessons Coach Bell had to share today. And we're still here in the studio with Multiply Hub. We have the founder, Prince, here. And we're talking the courier service and how to help Prince scale up better. And Mona, before we went to Coach's Corner, you were talking about managing the assets of the company better. That's right, Shalom. Thank you. So... I started to think about this only because of the number you said you would buy as an increment. I started thinking, are you trying to replace existing assets? Because by now, those assets have gone through a lot. They've returned for you since 2018. Um, Kwame mentioned maintenance. After a year or two, they start to chew up more oil. Mm -hmm. They start needing filter mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. and, and all that. So maintenance cost starts to rise. In your first one and a half years, you're fine. After that, your maintenance starts going up and it chews into your profitability. Mm -hmm. Again, fuel consumption also starts to change. The patterns start changing post two years. So your point is that the five additional bikes may not actually, actually be an expansion. Exactly. It may be keeping replacing. him at the same point because of the replacement. So you uh, tell us. Actually, uh, with what I do is I don't use uh, my bikes for more than one year. Every one year I have to sell and, and buy replace. and replace. That is what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't use bike more than a year with the experience that I have. So yes, mm -hmm. you'll still be doing that when you add on the five? Yes, please. So you want so to have a I fleet of ten? ten. Yes, okay. please. Which, oh. which you, you do that changing? Yes, I'll be doing that So he's not even waiting for the classic depreciation. He's not. What is the incremental um, rate yeah. of the How much do you pay in addition, year, to, in addition to replace? Uh, sometimes you do increase to, let's say, um, 5%. No, I don't want to. So you buy the bike so for... Let's, say, let's, no, say if I let's buy step it. back. You buy the bike for 4000 Okay, at first I was buying it at uh, 3800 Okay, so you and buy the now, bike for 3800 Yeah, and now it is 4200 mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, so you buy it for... Four, okay, let's say last year mm -hmm. you bought a bike for 4000 Last year, 3900 mm -hmm. Three th It's the so same. Prince. Let's drop the nine. <laughs> <laughs> so 4000 Okay. <laughs> you bought the bike for 4000 CDs mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So sometime this year you're going to be selling this bike and yes, buying a new and one. Buy a new one. How much are you going to be selling it for? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I do sell it between 2200 or 2300 depending on the buyer and how... Let's even assume that you're going to sell it in September for 2500 Okay. And a new one this year is likely, you look, looking at it, to cost 4200 Sure. Wow. They're going to top up. L yes. Let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. You'll be topping up with... 4000 you buy it for... Mm -hmm. You sell it for two thousand five hundred. After one year. After one year, After would one you year. have made a certain margin that would allow you to make good profit on that one year? Yes, please. You would have. Margin. But you are you'll be adding thousand seven hundred this year to replace it. Looking mm -hmm. at the kind of work the bike will be doing and the income it will generate, the top up wouldn't be a problem. Not significant. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. First of all, when you selling for motor, but mm, first of all, when you buy the motorbike new, as soon as you you, you go away, it you've depreciates. lost about twenty percent yes. to be able to the cost a second hand. Yeah. So if it was four thousand, twenty so percent is now eight hundred. No, so yeah. now yeah. it's now the cost is now three thousand two hundred. Yeah. Then you sell okay. it for two five. So when you're selling it for two five, it's because you have actually earned more than that difference. Okay, so he's actually losing only seven hundred. Mm. It's not even a loss. He's already no, made No, I mean like in money. terms of the numbers. So he yes. has made that margin. Okay. And what he that. gains on is on maintenance. Yeah. That he constantly has a fairly new fleet, fleet. Okay. which is not um, draining him on, on the other Prince side. This is a smart businessman. So tell me, yeah. why do you choose that particular type of bike? Uh, it is because uh, I have used other bikes which did not help me. So this particular Meaning reliability. Is, yes, reliability. That's a direct translation yes. from <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. And and these bikes, how often do they appreciate? Actually, in terms uh, of price. Actually, <laughs> appreciate motorcycles. Yes, like the motorcycle the, the, the price. The price. Oh, you mean the prices, yeah, the price. but not how the asset often, itself. How yeah. often does it appreciate? Actually, uh, every six months or every one year. I can't year. tell, but anytime I want to buy a new one and I go, that is when I see. So what you've got to do is that within the year, you should monitor the appreciation of the bikes. The prices. The prices. The prices. So that it gives you a better idea when you now want to sell. Oh, okay. And not wait till you're going to sell. Then You've you added the 200 yes. already. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, I'd like to speak to a little thing that may help you and okay. help um, business owners at Please home do. too who are doing um, transportation business. So I'm glad that this business came out of your authentic self, your love to ride motorcycles. It means anytime your drivers are playing around with you, you, you can, can jump yes, on sure. that motorcycle sure. and go. Sure. There's no been, hassle I've, there. I've you that. can do it exactly. So that is great. Number two, even though you're a sole proprietor, and maybe you are not ready to have a board. Prince, it will be good to show up your confidence to have maybe one or two independent advisors, advisors who will give you a different view. Because sometimes when you are in, you mm -hmm. are just narrow yeah. vision, tunnel vision. But to have some independent advisors who will caution you that, watch this, watch that, make sure you're going right. Especially so in the challenge you raise about recruiting right people. Exactly. Yeah. That may help you address that. You, you should not necessarily be the person who recruits, or you should have someone in addition to you who is looking at other things concerning that Even person. Even in an interview, they may notice things you don't notice, exactly. and that may help you actually get better stuff. Uh -huh. So some ha that someone should not be someone involved in motorcycle or delivery business. Mm -hmm. Totally different. So that when they come, they come with a fresh set of eyes, and they're able to tell you, look this way, look that way. Mm -hmm. You have a good knowledge of the business, no, I think you, you, you sound like you're concluding. So let's oh, let's okay. go on a break. Okay. Let's go on a break. And um, it's really been fascinating talking to Prince. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a break. And when we come back, we would um, tie all this together. That's right. And like Mona started saying, Prince has a good business. And I agree. So it's going to get better. So let's go on a break. And when we come back, we'll wrap this up. Welcome back, viewers. This is still Business Compass, and it's been such a pleasure spending the last more than half an hour with Prince of Multiply Hub. So, Mona was saying you have a good business, and I agree. Yes. Let's wrap yes. it up, Mona. So, to wrap up quickly, I think he has good knowledge of the business that he's into. He loves it. He's aware of the nuances associated with it. He's actually experienced some of it. Yeah. That you can lose assets and most importantly you have a good understanding of the business so viewers at home when you go into a business don't go in trying to wade through the darkness have an understanding of the business that way when something goes wrong you know how to find solutions fix for it, it. Yes. so that's my my thing for you okay thank you thank you thank you Mona. um i think that looking at your vision it goes to show that you're looking forward and you indicate that you would like to operate like Jumia.com Jumia. Jumia and have an e-commerce platform for selling and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So you need to be able to put these things on paper. For you to accelerate to where you want to get to, it needs to be on paper. And then you monitor it as you go along. I see you not only owning motorbikes, not only doing Jumia, but also having car rental. Also being able to rent out um, um, Uber cars to other people. Sure. You have the tenacity to do it. Sure. You're the kind of person who has the confidence and doesn't mess about from the way I see how you're answering. So as much as possible, try and stick to what you have to do to get this business going. Okay. But most importantly, manage your costs, get the right equipment, put savings in your account, the money should work for you so that you can now show the bank that you have the wherewithal to be able yes. to get loans or overdrafts from them. And then on the outward bit, consider having an equity partner and good to advisors to direct you. Don't forget the legal governance around this business. You need to find a lawyer to sit with you 
to put all this together. And I think going forward, you'd have a fantastic business and your, comp your competition. You should always be aware of what your competition is doing. I like Kwame. What truck are we giving Kwame? <laughs> since, he's, since Kwame has given you a bigger mm -hmm. vision, what truck are we giving Prince? You've given him a bigger vision. Is he going to move from motorbikes? I, I think process, process is really... You think process? For him, yeah, okay. for him it's process. Okay. It's just I, had, I had a different team. idea. What but did hey, you have? Tell us. I thought it was really um, strategy. He's very strategic, but a bigger strategy. But I think the process will still process. get him there. Yeah. Process. So I agree with you. But uh, I mean, I, I've, I'm fascinated by Prince. Mm -hmm. um, Prince is a classic, classic entrepreneur. It's just yes. a beautiful story. Yes. Yes. I, I just want yes. him to own that story yes. and know that it's not. Um, a nine day it's not No, it's not even no usual to start a business from a passion. Mm -hmm take a loan from a sibling, mm -hmm. be disciplined enough to repay yeah. that loan, mm -hmm. and then grow from one motorbike and know when to move from <laughs> the illegal side mm -hmm. and convert That's it so illegal. easily Correct. into a legal way of doing it. Grow it to five, six motorbikes, and even know himself enough to know the point where he says, I need financing to grow this, and okay. I need to learn structure to make this bigger yeah. it's it's very unusual yeah. and he's also very i like the way he's been very meticulous and disciplined about his bookkeeping and managing the revenues that mm -hmm. come he's not just taking it and spending it he's managing that he's an extremely disciplined business mm -hmm. person and i totally agree mm -hmm. with coming you're going to go far you have everything that an entrepreneur needs you have a story you have courage you have confidence and you have discipline i have no doubt you're going to go far and we know that when we bring you back, we'll be talking about your big... Your, I don't even think it's a junior type e-commerce thing. It's mm -hmm. stick Bigger to the transportation. Yeah, stick to transportation. Stick to That's transport. Don't get... Stick to the transport. Mm, no Expand reason. the transport channels from mm -hmm. motorbike to the trucks to the car rentals. Mm -hmm. Stick to what you're doing best. Mm, okay. Because the reason I wanted to go into Jumia was when I employ more riders who are making sure people's items are being delivered, I will be idle. No, you won't no, be. No, you won't be. You'll be managing the vehicles as well. Yeah. There's you, a fleet you of never vehicles stop coming. Being a rider. You never stop being a rider. The day you stop being a rider, the dream <laughs> will die. You are the rainmaker. <laughs> and that's why we talked about you being able to jump on those motorcycles at any time. Never think you are too big mm. to ride a motorcycle. That day, the dream ends. But the thing is that... You must be part of the business. Your vision should spur you on to other things. Yeah. So as that one is working, you're looking at other things. Yes. And your business is to build the business from where it was to where it should go. Prince, so you will I, never be idle. I expect me. to see you having you can't tankers. See <laughs> <laughs> huh? You will never be idle. I'm like, yeah, I'm never idle. Mm, yeah. Some of us are never I'm idle. Never we always idle. find something to do. So we wish you the best and yeah. we know you'll go far. Thank and we're going to be monitoring. If you need help, please come. Yeah. Okay. We'll be thank here to support you and to guide you even better. Thank you. So thank you, viewers. Thank you. This has been um, Business Compass, the GPS for your business. And it's been a lovely ride <laughs> with Prince of Multiply Hub. Thank you, Mona. Thank You're you, welcome. Kwame. Thank you to Fiducial Services Limited for creating this show and producing it. Thank you to the team behind all this. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And my name is Charlotte Ose, and I hope, look forward to seeing you again next week. Hello, my name is Prince Agbiaji and I'm the founder of Multiply Hub Courier Service. I have learned how to put process in place and also how to put structures that will help me to attract investors. I'm very grateful to be here and I also want to use this opportunity to thank the panelists for helping me to know what I need to put in place in order to get my business where it's supposed to be. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Mona Porte and I'm glad to be with you today to give you a business tip that may be useful in your life. Today we'll discuss money. Money is your own natural energy yield. Always remember, it's my own natural energy yield, M-O-N-E-Y, acronym for money. 
money gives you a better quality of life and therefore all of us like to have money. What we do with money, how we treat money, our relationship with money will depend a lot on our training and will also give us great benefits. Thank you and see you next time.